Hi everybody, I thought I'd come on and share a little bit of my day with you. I've got some hot milk. Lukewarm milk. Harriet is somewhere. Where are we? Oh, she's out the other day. You're looking in the mirror again. I told you she's such a vain cat. Looking in the mirror. You need to get that little bit of black off your nose. I'm going to wash your face. You're not getting into bed with me tonight. Like that. <laughs> um, so you know that old saying that um, use it or you'll lose it. And I, I have, I, you, you can look at videos of me from before Alfie died, um, three years ago, last August. And you can look at videos prior to that and you would think you're looking at a different woman. Um, you know, I, I was saying to a friend earlier, I just feel like a shell of what I was. Um, I'm not not being able to do any of the things I used to do. I still had gone to British to try. I still have the fractured bones in my back, but I still managed to dress nicely. I still managed to wear heels. I um still attracted glances from people, you know. Um I still have my my teeth um as such and um i wasn't anything like i am now and so uh, it hurts me to think I, I could go to birmingham airport and think nothing of it it's just getting um a plane to dublin by myself going to dublin by myself going to temple bar having a look around the gift shops and the um, all the old curiosities there and having a drink in the Temple Bar pub and Bloom's Hotel um, getting the train down from Euston Station in Dublin down to Thurley's past the Colourwack race course and um, I did it all you know and, and saw the cousins and I didn't realise how fortunate I was really to have um, that modicum of health more than I've got. I I think when Alf died, I think a big part of me went with him and I, I need to try and, and find a way now to claw my way back. Um, so, self-care i mean look i wouldn't normally make even make myself a cup of hot milk the cinnamon um i just do the very bare minimum to keep body and soul together um in a half-hearted sort of way and yeah you know use it or you lose it and the more that you self-isolate, and I've been deliberately self-isolating from people around me, um, from family, from friends. Um, and I haven't wanted to talk to anybody. I haven't wanted to do anything. I, I, the only thing I, I, that was in my mind to do was to ring the vicar and see if I could go and sit in the church by myself because he said I could. Um, the church where we were married and where Alfie's funeral was held. So he said, you know, you don't finish up for me and I could go in there just for some quiet reflections, I suppose. And I, I would like to do that. I would. Um, at the moment, I don't feel that bereavement councils, counselling is not going to help me. Um, at the moment i've got far too much bottled up inside of me 
that um, it's not time to share it. It's not. I will know when it is. Um, and that's really what part of what I started the channel for was to share our journey and Alf's journey and show how it was possible to live with Parkinson's disease and live courageously and um, have a great outlook. Alf always, always when he could dress himself, regardless of how long it would take him, regardless of it, if he was walking out the front door, he would always put the shirt and tie on, always. Um, and it's just reminded me that the last time his tie was done, I did it and it was when he was in his casket. And I think I did a nice job. A wings or not. Harriet, I'm making a video there, do you mind? <laughs> Madam, she's got some new litter um, and it's an old to her. So yeah, the use it or lose it, and I think I've got I've got to sort of start to ease my way way back. Um, my teeth, I've got um, an appointment on the in March, beginning of March, um, and I'll only need two more appointments, and then it'll be it'll be done. Um, and I'm going to get him to make the second appointment when I'm there because you know I. The first appointment was a cock-up because they gave us a date and then they um, altered it and it was my fault really because I, I sort of had it in my mind to change the date and it went out of my head and so we turned up on the day that was originally said and we weren't due to go till the following day, couldn't do it the following day, another appointment so they couldn't give an appointment then until this, this appointment in April. So that's like from the end of Jan, beginning of Feb. Oh yeah, I had, uh, and the next appointment, I was in hospital, that was right, so that was missed. And I rang them to say that I was in hospital. Um, ring us as soon as you're out, so that was the beginning of February. And we went in and um, I couldn't get an appointment till the beginning of April. So I'm I'm all at sixes and sevens with all these appointments. So anyway, that will be done. Um beginning of April and then I'm gonna say to him, you know, if you can do it in another two rather than three visits, I don't see why not. And um let's get it done and over with because it, it's it's been a long process because of all the problems with my gums um, and the bleeding and and fortunately there's no problem so you can go ahead and just snap them in you know and I can smile again. This coming Friday I have been sent an appointment I think it's Friday I'm going to have to check this as well. Friday or Monday, I think it's Friday. I've got an appointment for a fluoroscopy going down my throat into my gully. So I haven't, I haven't really wanted to have that. Um, I've, got to, I've got to have the barium swallow before that one, which I'll do there on the day. And then... Um, you know, they'll go in with and do what they need to do. And that will see all down my throat, my hiatus hernia, all the cells, because um, the doctor was concerned about the change in the scratchiness in my, my voice and the change in my voice and the precancerous cells in my throat. So um, she's concerned about that. So... I'm concerned about that. So that's an appointment on Friday, I think. I'll make sure. So everything is up and coming. And it's going to be spring very shortly. And the blossoms on the trees. 
and everywhere looks beautiful. I love the magnolia trees. I absolutely love them. My garden is a mess. Um, I think I told you I, I, I put the fences up on both sides, as many as panels as needed. Next door, the new neighbours, he kept texting my son, when is your mum going to get these fences done? And we were told when we moved in by the builder that that side was ours. So I said, I'll get them done when I'm ready. His kids kicked them in anyway, I got them done. And um, he painted them all pink. And all, all the pink started coming through to my side. So, And I'd already painted like blue because I wanted like a forget-me-not blue, like my forget-me-not. So um, my son mentioned something to him about doing that. And the next thing we know is he comes wa out waving the deeds, um, his house deeds, saying, um, that's my side. Well, it wasn't his bloody side when he had to pay for the fencing, was it? So I've got to pay for this side. I've already paid for some, I've got to pay for it two more I think and get my garden to rights it's it's not fun living on your own and it's not fun having such a big house to maintain um you know I've said before it's four bedrooms three bathrooms and a downstairs loo a large kitchen and a laundry room front drive, back garden, and it's a lot of upkeep and, you know, my kids work, they all work full time, I'm not going to become the sort of person who's going to be totally reliant on them, I don't want to, I don't want to do that, um, I have been doing that though, a lot recently, just not asking them to do anything, but just let it go. I don't care. Let it crumble all around me, like Miss Havisham. But I can't do that, can I? I'm not Miss Havisham. And we all know what happened to her. I'll be back later.